the Islamic tradition, there's a, a hadith that says that um, that God created the, the, the Ar Rahman, the merciful, created man in his own image. And they have a lot of debate about what that tradition means, but the dominant opinion amongst classical Muslim theologians, and, and obviously um, there's some anthropomorphic traditions in Islam that, uh, in fact, the what's called the Wahhabi or the Salafi tradition tends to have a very anthropomorphic uh, idea about that tradition. And so they will argue that God's actually in the direction up, and, and they demand. I was once surrounded by a group in, in Saudi Arabia. I was in Medina of young students. Uh, some of them were American students that were studying there, and they surrounded me demanding that I assert that God was up, <laughs> like <laughs> physically up there. And I said to them, I told them, I said, you know, do you, do you concede that the earth is round? And they said, yes. And I said, well, you know, where do you point if you're on the other side of the planet? <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> and that definitely confused them a little bit. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the, the theologians argue that we're created in the metaphysical image of God. And there are 20 uh, attributes that are considered necessary for God to believe that God the, the one is aseity, which the Catholics assert also. The idea that God is a being unto himself. He does not need anything outside of his own essence to exist. Uh, and then the idea of firstness without uh, beginning, uh, lastness without. And, and it goes on. But the, the seven uh, uh, attributes that, uh, of life, of um, sight, of hearing, uh, the, the, that he's mutakadam, that God speaks. So sight, life, hearing, speech, um, and that he sees uh, everything. These, the seven attributes, the, the theologians argue that these attributes manifest in the human being as a way of approximating the understanding of God to man, that we know that God is all-seeing because he has limited our sight, and yet he can speak to us and tell us that he's all-seeing, and the fact that we have sight enables us to understand what that means, even though, you know, in mathematics they say any number over infinity is canceled out. And so any temporal attribute of a contingent being in relation to the atemporal reality of an absolute being that's not contingent is, is, uh, is canceled out. So we can't say, we, we, we see, but we can't say we see like God. But when God says he is the all hearing or the all see, the all hearing or the omniscient, the all powerful, we know what power is because we have been given this limited power, contingent power that enables us to understand that concept. So the, the Muslims agree with the Jews and the Christians on that principle, but with that caveat that it has to be understood uh, you know, we, we have a, the, the Christians call it, uh, Catholics call it the via negativa, right? In, yes, that's right. in, in theology, that we're, we believe that, that it's easier to say what God is not than to say what God is. And the Muslim theologians say that anything that will occur to your mind, God is other than that. And so, in the end, the, there, there's an, the inconceivability of God for the human intellect. Uh, which, um, and in fact, there's a tradition the Prophet Muhammad said, never reflect on the essence of God, but reflect on the gifts that God has given you, the blessings. And we know that mathematicians like George Cantor, who uh, attempted to even penetrate uh, uh, infinity, and you know, most of these mathematicians have gone mad. I mean, literally, Cantor ended up in a straitjacket that uh, the human being cannot contemplate uh, infinity, even an actual actual infinity, which mathematicians talk about, as opposed to an absolute. But um, the God's essence is impenetrable for the human intellect. So.